we're talking about 15 practical tips for songwriters, let's do it. Number one, start with something that inspires you. Whether you are starting with a piano hook or a guitar hook or a bass line or a vocal melody, an interesting symbol or a song title, doesn't really matter, just make sure it inspires you. If you build your song off of a strong foundation that you are really excited about, you're probably gonna write a better song and when the going gets rough and you're in the middle of the song and you're really struggling, when you built it on something that you think is really awesome, you're gonna be able to push through. If you built it on a chord progression that you think is just really boring or something that you never thought was that good to begin with, it's gonna be hard to push through. Tip number two, work downstream as much as you can. This is for everything across the board. If you find that it's much easier for you to write the music first versus the lyrics first, do that. If you think it's much easier to write the melody first, do that. If you think the easiest way to write a song is to sit at a piano and write the song, do that. If you think it's way easier to write a song on a guitar, then do that. Make songwriting not any harder than it needs to be. Don't artificially make it hard unless it's for learning purposes or growing purposes, that's good, we should all want to improve. But generally speaking, write downstream. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Tip number three is to do at least some writing at the edge of your ability. This is how we grow. Whenever you are taking piano lessons or guitar lessons, always your teacher is giving you pieces at the edge of your ability. That's how you get better at the piano or the guitar. The same thing is gonna be true for songwriting. We want to make sure we are pushing ourselves in all sorts of different ways, whether it's different ways of writing or integrating more music theory knowledge slowly into our writing, or even pushing ourselves instrumentally or vocally, more on the performance end, where maybe we didn't have vocal melodies that went particularly high before, but now we kind of push the edge of our range with a vocal melody in the song we're writing. Let's say you learned a new chord. You didn't know what a seventh chord was before, and now you do. Maybe try building a whole song around this idea of, hey, I'm gonna make sure I have a seventh chord in this chord progression, make sure it's one that is inspiring to me, and then build a song off of that. Tip number four is to let your music inspire your lyrics rather than letting your lyrics inspire your music. Essentially, I think this is the right answer for probably 95% of all songwriters. And essentially it comes down to this. I think for most humans, it is much more intuitive and much more downstream for us to listen to music and try to figure out what story is being told by that music compared to looking at lyrics or words and trying to hear music in our head based on the words. When you listen to just a movie soundtrack or a classical piece, do you feel like you can figure out, oh, this is what the story's being told, this is the emotion of the music? Or do you find it easier to look at lyrics and hear music in your head? For probably 95% or more of people, the first one is way easier. So don't make songwriting harder than it has to be. Back to the right downstream point, listen to the music, figure out what it sounds like it would be about, and then make sure that the lyrics you write match with that feeling. Tip number five, develop your lyric idea before writing any lyrics. A lot of people assume the first step of lyric writing is writing lyrics, and it can be, but I actually think it's better if we wait to write lyrics and first develop our idea a little bit more first. This can look a whole bunch of different ways, but one really good thing to do is to just write in prose before you try to start writing lyrics. One reason I think it's great to start with prose is it relieves the implicit pressure of things like, oh, it needs to be poetic and the words need to be really amazing right away and the meter needs to be good. No, just write in plain old prose. Who cares? You're just writing to get ideas out. You're exploring all the different ideas. Yeah, most of what you write won't end up making the song, but you're just fleshing out the ideas in a low pressure way. Something else you can do is grab some images on Google Images, like art that you think is inspiring, that you think sort of evokes the same feelings or is addressing some of the same things as your songs. You can go look up a bunch of different words, like with tools like relatedwords.org, which we'll talk about more later, where you're basically figuring out a whole pool of words that sort of evoke the central imagery of your song. And then when you, comes to actual lyric writing, you have a pool of words to use, you have some images to inspire you, you have a bunch of prose writing, and you might have even in your prose writing come up with some pretty good lines that can go into your lyrics. You've developed out your idea so that when you go into lyric writing, you don't have the pressure of a blank page, but instead you've fleshed out the idea and now you get to write the lyrics. Tip number six, another lyrical one, meter is essential, rhyming, 
is optional. And not only is it optional, but it should not be overused. One of the biggest misconceptions people have is that poetry is all about rhyming, when in fact, poetry is much more about meter than it is about rhyming. In fact, you can have a poem that doesn't rhyme at all. You can have lyrics that doesn't rhyme at all. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes it's even better. What's most important is to say exactly what you want to say and to make sure the meter is right. This is especially important for poetry and for lyrics because let's take lyrics because, well, we're songwriters. It needs to be able to match with the melody and be a natural fit with the melody. And the meter of the lyrics needs to match with the natural rhythm of the melody. So if anything, make sure you get your meter right. And of course, make sure your lyrics are saying what you intend to say. One of the most cringy things in all of lyrics is when people obviously are twisting what they're trying to say just to fit some arbitrary rhyme scheme. And then it ends up being some cringy rhyme like light and night, which by the way is fine. I I've rhymed light and night. Everybody probably has. I'm not saying that rhyme is inherently bad, but if we are forcing all of our lyrics to the same old, same old rhymes over and over and over again, just because we think rhyming is all important, it's not. You can have lyrics that don't rhyme at all and they're great. I bet you of your 10 favorite songs, there are several of them, if not most of them, where for whole song sections, they don't bother rhyming at all. Maybe even the whole song. Rhyming is non-essential. Meter is essential. Tip number seven, don't be afraid to use tools that we have access to. There are so many great tools out there for songwriters on the internet or computer tools in general that may not require internet, such as recording software. There's rhymezone.org, which will help with rhyming. There's thesaurus.com, which is gonna help with finding better words. Maybe you have a word that is like technically what you're trying to say, but it's not super precise. It's not a great word. Thesaurus.com can help you find the right word. There's things like drum loops out there and things like drumbit.app and different websites that have drum loops that you can play that can help inspire you to write different music than you otherwise would. I would never write funky music if I just sat at a keyboard with no drum loop, but if I put a funk loop on, all of a sudden what I write is funky. That's just an easy hack to be able to write music that sounds different than what you usually write. And even the existence of recording software and hardware in general, and the fact that we can record at home and virtual instruments can help with our songwriting as well. It can be a really useful tool that as you're writing, you can use your recording software to make your keyboard sound like a harp. That can be really helpful because the sound of a harp is going to inspire you to play differently and going to inspire your song in a very different direction than the sound of a piano. And this is something that we can do easily easily with recording software and virtual instruments. You don't have to know anybody who plays harp. You don't have to play harp yourself, but with your keyboard, you can get string sounds or harp sounds or organ sounds and write songs off of those sounds. And going off of that, tip number eight is that sometimes for inspiration, it can be really helpful to think like a producer and think more deeply about sounds. Now this can be as simple as using an organ virtual instrument or a harp virtual instrument as we just mentioned, but this also could be applied to more interesting sounds. For instance, something that I found really inspiring is there is a virtual instrument out there that is essentially a synth that is made from the sound of a foghorn, which is a sound that I think is really cool. It evokes the ocean. It fit with an AP that I was working on. So it just is a sound that I found very inspiring and was very helpful. Something else you can do is just make your own sounds. This can be way simpler, by the way, than people think it is. You can take sounds, whether from YouTube videos or from um, just taking your phone out and recording the sound of your dog barking or a fan or your grandfather clock or your watch ticking. And then you can just do things to adjust the sound. You can cut it off, you can reverse it, you can slow it down, you can speed it up. There's so many different things you can do. And then you can maybe make a little rhythm with it or a short melody with it, put some pitch to it. And soon you have this foundation for a song or you're just inspired by this sound that you made. That can be a great way to get inspired it's a little bit more of a deep dive and might be deeper than you're willing to go, but hey, I find it very helpful once in a while. Tip number nine is to slowly learn music theory and integrate it as you go. This is very important because you should learn music theory. It absolutely will help you write. And anybody who's ever told you that music theory doesn't help with music writing is a liar. They're either a liar who knows they're a liar because they know music theory and they know it's a lie, or they don't even know what music theory is and therefore they're lying because they think music theory is something like how to read sheet music, which it has nothing to do with. But anyway, 
learn it slowly and actually apply it. Because yeah, sure, you could take a deep dive in music theory and not apply much, if any of it, and then soon you're just gonna resent it and be angry because you're like, it didn't help me write songs better. Well, yeah, because you didn't apply it. It's like watching a bunch of videos on how to play piano better, but not actually practicing the piano and practicing the exercises that you just watched. You need to actually apply it. The only useful music theory knowledge is the music theory knowledge that you apply. Tip number 10, start analyzing music rather than just listening to it for fun. Yes, of course, we all love music. That's why we want to write our own songs. But as songwriters, we now don't have the luxury of just listening to songs for fun. Well, I suppose we could, but we shouldn't. Or at least we shouldn't exclusively listen to songs for fun. We should certainly get in the habit of more and more often listening to songs with an analytical ear. Whether it be something like, ooh, there's one part of this song that makes me cringe. Why? Let me not do that. Which, by the way, usually it's a really cringy lyric that will do that. But that's a great thing to learn from. And then on the other side, if we get goosebumps with a certain part of a song, or there's a certain part of a song that just really makes us feel something, figure out what it is. Or maybe there's something that's like, ooh, that's super epic and big sounding. Analyze it, figure out, okay, what are they doing there that makes it sound so big and epic? How do I apply that? Because a great way to learn is by listening to music that we really like, or listening to moments in music we really like and figuring out how it's done. Which by the way, is kind of the same way that music theory is helpful. Tip number 11, ride the wave, and when there is no wave, paddle anyway. Which is basically my surfing analogy for we should always put the work in to write songs, whether we are inspired or not. But, because the first part of that is ride the wave, when there is a wave of inspiration, make sure you write it out. Let's say you write songs from 11.30 to midnight every night, because everybody in your house is asleep, that's just a good time for you. If you're inspired one night, then don't go to bed at midnight. Keep writing. Yeah, you're gonna get less sleep. It'll be fine. You're feeling inspired, ride the wave. Take advantage of it and write until you're just too tired to go any longer or when your inspiration runs out. But that's not an excuse to not write at all on days that you're not inspired. There's many reasons for this. One is very often you earn being inspired by putting the work in. Many nights you would have been inspired if you actually put the work in after 15, 20 minutes, but you didn't put the work in. So you never got inspired because you're too busy watching TV. That's one part. Another part is a lot of great work in songs actually happens when you're not inspired. A lot of the songwriting process is perspiration, not inspiration. And since most of songwriting is perspiration rather than inspiration, which by the way is true of any art form, writing novels, writing movies, making movies, all of it. Always perspiration is more important than inspiration. Therefore, we should make sure we are putting in the perspiration whether or not inspiration comes. We can't control inspiration, we can control how much work we put in. Tip number 12, have many different songs that you are working on all at once. There's many reasons for this. One great reason is that it simply gives you more options to work on depending on the mood you're in that day. If you're really angry today and you have 15 different songs you're working on and three of them are kind of angry, those are three great options to write. If you're only working on one song and it's a really romantic love song and you're just ticked off today, you're probably not gonna be well equipped to write that song today. But when you have more options, you can just write songs that are going to fit with your mood better. And also if you're working on a bunch of different songs, presumably they're all at different stages. So maybe if you're in a mood where you think, ooh, I really feel like wordsmithing today. I feel like I've been really articulate today and I wanna do things with words. Then you can work on your songs where you are at the lyric stage. Or if you're feeling like, you know what? I just kinda want to write some melodies. I'm feeling music today then you have probably a few songs that need melodies written and you can work on those. And just as a bonus thing here, it also removes the pressure on any one given song. Because if you're working on 15 songs at once, then if there's one song you're stuck on, who cares? Does it even matter if you end up starting and finishing 100 songs before you start and finish one song? Like you start one song, then you start 14 others, and then you finish all 14 of those, and then you finish all 14 of the next round and the next round, and you still haven't finished the first song? Who cares? There's no pressure on that one song. Maybe it just isn't meant to be finished until you have some other life experience 10 years from now. Who cares? You're still finishing songs, which is what really matters. It doesn't really matter how long each song takes. Tip number 13, turn off your internal critic or editor and write a lot. And then when you're done with writing, turn on that internal critic or editor for the editing process. So like seemingly all the tips in this video, there's actually several tips within this, but one important part is to make sure that we are not self-editing when we're writing. 
that critical brain is really important and helpful for the editing process. That's when we should look at our ideas and say, that's stupid, that's terrible. We need to fix that, that's awful. You can't let anybody see that. But when we're writing, that actually isn't very helpful. That's what gives us writer's block. Instead, we want to just write, just do it. That's it. We want to get in the practice of just writing. And we also want to get in the practice of actually being very critical when it comes to the editing process. If we are too easy on ourselves in the editing process or too hard on ourselves in the writing process, both are gonna have disastrous results. The first one will make our final draft end up sucking, and the second one means we won't write at all. We just will be stuck in writer's block forever. Tip number 14 is to separate out different parts of the songwriting process because they require different mindsets. A lot of times people think of a songwriting session as sitting down and writing one song. I think very often a better way to look at a songwriting session is that it is to work on one very specific part and one sort of mindset. Think of it this way. There are many songwriters that actually are just lyricists or just music composers. That's why a lot of songwriting duos exist where one person does the lyrics and one does the music. Why is that? Because they're wildly different skill sets to the point that you can be really elite at writing lyrics and be terrible at writing music and vice versa. So if that's the case, wouldn't it also make sense that the mindset it takes to write lyrics is different than the mindset of writing music? So very often a good way to go is to have a whole songwriting session that's just for sitting at your favorite instrument and coming up with ideas. You're not gonna develop any of the ideas, you're not gonna flesh out any of the ideas, you're just coming up with ideas. You are in improvisation mode. Then maybe in the next songwriting session you take one of those song sparks that you came up with in the improvisation session and you figure out how to start developing that into a more fully fleshed out piece of music. Then maybe in a different songwriting session, you take one of those ideas and start fleshing it out. You figure out what's the underlying chord progression, maybe you figure out some other instrument parts to go with it, maybe you start working on the vocal melody. Again, very different mindset than just sitting at the piano or guitar and just improvising. In fact, if you think back to the previous point where we talked about editing versus writing and the different mindsets there, even writing lyrics versus editing lyrics requires a different mindset. So it makes sense to have a songwriting session where you are just writing and you totally have the critic off and then you have another songwriting session where you are editing and that critic is on. And tip number 15, throw out any advice that doesn't work for you. What I did not just say is to throw out any advice that you don't like or that ticked you off in the moment because it challenged your preconceived notions, no. Give advice a shot, a real shot, and if it really doesn't work for you, then yeah, throw it out. So for some things that work for me and work for maybe even 95% of other people, you might be in the 5% where it's like, no, this really doesn't help me. I should do this other thing instead. In that case, throw out that piece of advice. Don't just do it because somebody said so. And if you wanna break lyric writing into a repeatable process where you can actually get consistent results that you are proud of, be sure to check out my six step lyric writing checklist. We mentioned it earlier in the video, but it breaks down lyric writing into six steps so that you can have lyrics that you are actually proud of in a repeatable way where you're not just relying on inspiration striking at the right moment while you happen to be writing lyrics. There's development work to do before lyric writing, and there is some editing work to be done after lyric writing that really can make it so that pretty much every lyric you write can be something where you're like, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this. This is pretty good, rather than just relying on the muse. Be sure to check it out, songwritertheory.com slash lyric checklist. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs>